In this video, I'm actually going to solve the same example using both the work energy principle and conservation of energy. This way you can really see the difference between the two methods and you can see how one might be better than the other. In this case, the reason that I can do that is because here we are neglecting friction. And so there's no friction on our system and there's no external force. So we don't have friction between the block A and the slope. We also don't have an external force. For example, that would look like maybe um, here if we had an external P here or something, then we couldn't use conservation of energy, but we can use the work energy principle. In this case, because we don't have those, we're okay to go ahead with both methods. So I'm going to start with the principle of conservation of energy. So the first method that we'll do is the work energy principle. And the way that we start these problems is the same as always. We start with a free body diagram. So our free body diagram in this case for A, we have block A going down along the slope. We have a force 3T here from the pulley. We also have a normal force along the slope, we'll call this NA, and we've got the weight of A coming down. Because this is the principle of work and energy, we do not draw a free body, <coughs> we do not draw a free body diagram because we're not equate, sorry, my bad. We do not draw a kinetic diagram, we only draw a free body diagram. So in this case, we do not draw, in this case here, MA acceleration of A. That is not appropriate for this method. So we just draw the free body diagram. I'll draw the free body diagram of B. And this one has 2T up and the weight of B down. Now in this problem, we don't know what direction the blocks are moving. So we know that A is heavier, uh, but because of the pulley system, we can't tell for sure which direction the blocks are moving. And the other challenge here is that we don't know what the friction is. So our traditional method of using impending motion also won't work to determine which direction these blocks are moving. So instead, what I'm going to do is sort of a force balance. So I'm gonna start over here at block A, and I'm gonna say in the X direction, so let's say, our x direction, um, let's just put it like that for now. So then we, we know that we have minus 3t plus wa sine of 20, because here this angle would be 20, um, is equal to zero. And let's solve what that t would be. So this t would be equal to 44.7 newtons. If you plug in here, the, the, the mass of A and gravity. And I'm gonna take this T value and see what happens over here at block B. So if the tension in the cable is equal to 44.7 Newtons, that means that over here, we've got 89 Newtons, if you plug in that 44. And here, the weight of B would be 9.81 times our eight kilograms, which is equal to 78.48 Newtons. And so here you can see that the force up here in the tension of the cable is larger than the weight of block B. And so from that, we know that block A is sliding down the incline and block B is being pulled up. So there's different ways of figuring out which direction your system is moving. But as long as you can show a proof that your forces add up, then you've shown that you know what the direction of your motion is. Just guessing um, isn't, uh, isn't sufficient. Sometimes you need to guess, uh, make an assumption, and then prove that your guess was right at the end. That's okay too, but you have to have some sort of proof that your guess was correct. Also note that these aren't the tensions in the actual cable because here we've made this assumption here that there's no movement, but there is actual movement. We are just trying to see if the net forces down the slope of A were greater than the forces up the slope for A, which is what we've proven here. Now we'll look at our constraint equation. So I'll draw here for A, X, A here and here I'll draw the XB going down. 
Remember, just a reminder that when you set your datum for your pulley systems and you draw the direction, the position vector, you should have an arrowhead here because this is denoting the positive direction. So drawing it, um, for example, drawing it just like this of xA is not accurate because you're, we're defining the positive direction as down. We need to have the arrowhead there. All right, so I'll just erase that. So I'm just going to move the screen up a little bit here. Um, so now we can draw our constraint equations, write them out. So here we have 3xA plus 2xB is equal to L1. And from there, we also know that 3 delta xA plus 2 delta xB is equal to 0. If you're not sure how to prove this, then write out the position at one moment and then another and subtract them, and you'll find that that holds true. Since the problem tells us that B is going up one meter, we can just fill that in right now. So we can say, um, use a different color, sorry. Um, so here we can say three delta x a plus two times negative one, because we defined B down as positive. So we need, if it's going up, it needs to be negative one here is equal to zero. And then we find delta x a is equal to 2 over 3 meters. This number came out as positive, which makes sense because a is going down, which is how we defined the positive direction. Now, we also know from our constraint equation, when we take the derivative, we've got 3 v a plus 2 v a is equal to 0. I'm going to scroll this all the way up and redraw the system. So in the work energy methods, we're really looking at two moments in time. So I'm going to draw those two out. So we have our system starting off, um, and I'll try to draw it actually here. So here I copied in the image, and I'll just draw in the next moment. So here, this would be moment one when the blocks are yellow. And after the system has moved, A will have moved down, so then it will be down here and block B will have moved up, and this would be your position two of block B. The distance here is one meter, and the distance here is two thirds of a meter. So in the X direction, you'd have to use your trigonometry for those two sides. Now when you do the principle of work in energy, the formula here is T1 plus u1 to 2 is equal to t2. So this is your kinetic energy at the first position. This is the work done on the entire system from position 1 to 2. And this is your kinetic energy at position 2. Our system is starting from rest. So in this example, our t1 is equal to 0 because there's no kinetic energy at the beginning. Now, for the work from position one to two, this is where we really have to be careful. So, and I'll actually, if you remember the free body diagrams here, we had A and we had three T, we had the weight of A, we had the normal force of A, and then we had B that was two T up and the weight of B down. So now we look at the forces and the direction of motion. So in this case, because A is moving down along the slope, it's only the sine component of the weight A that's doing any work, and it's along the entire path of motion. So here for U1 to 2, here we have the work of the weight of A times sine 20, because it's only the component along the path of motion that does work, multiplied by our delta x a, so multiplied by that path of motion. So that's the first bit of work that happens on our system. The second bit of work is happening from this 3t here. It's opposing the motion, so it's negative work. So then we have minus 3t times our delta x a. That's our second piece of work. The normal force here 
is opposing, it's perpendicular to the path of motion, so the normal force does not do any work, so we ignore it. Now we move over to block B, and here we have block B, we have work, sorry, we have the weight of B that's doing negative work in this case, so, and we also have the tension that's doing positive work. So here we have plus 2t times delta xb, and then we have minus, that's our second piece of work, minus the weight of b times, in this case, delta xb. That is all of the work done on our system. Now take a look here. Here we have 3t times delta xa. This will be minus 3t times, our delta xa is 2 thirds. Plus here we have 2t times delta xb, which was just 1. These threes cancel. Here we have minus, here we have minus 2t plus 2t. In this problem, and this always happens, these disappear. We don't actually need to calculate the tension in the cable, they just go away. So the work here will reduce. And then we have this is equal to T2. So our T2 is equal to 1 half MVA squared, that's the kinetic energy of block A at that moment, plus 1 half MV b squared, which will be the kinetic energy of block B. Rewriting this as one equation, we have, so now what I'm doing is I'm combining this term is equal to this term. So here we have the weight of A is equal to 40 times 9.81 sine 20 times 2 over 3 minus 8 times 9.81 times 1 is equal to 40 divided by 2 VA squared plus 8 over 2 VB squared. In this equation, we still have two unknowns. We've got the VA and we've got the VB, but we know that VB is equal to negative 3 over 2 VA from our constraint equation. So we plug this into here and we end up with 10.99 equals 29 VA squared, and the velocity of A is equal to 0 0.615 meters per second down the slope. We also have, I'm gonna move this up, we also have VB is equal to negative 3 over 2 VA, which is equal to negative 0.92 meters per second. That means that VB is equal to 0.92 meters per second upwards. That's our VB and our VA here, like that. So now we've solved the problem using the principle of work and energy. I'm going to pause this and go to the next video and we'll solve the same problem with the conservation of energy.